Today we're going to be talking about lipless crankbaits in the fall. I've talked about a ton of baits this fall, but lipless crankbaits are one of them that I have not gotten to yet. Well, today the conditions were pretty good for a lipless crankbait bite, so I want to go over that uh, with you today. Uh, we've had actually 70 degree weather for about a week here in November, which is way above normal. Got a pretty strong wind, which should kick up the activity. and. The next thing that I'm looking for though is life. Where do I see some life? And as I put the boat in and was driving around and looking, I'm not seeing a whole lot of stuff shallow. So I'm going to start a little bit deeper than I was hoping for. But one of the things I really like about a lipless crankbait in the fall, especially when these fish start to get grouped up, is you can cover water with it. It's not a lure that has to be fished super slow. I mean, you can't go blazing fast with it, but you can cover some water and locate where those fish are. Now, one of the things that is often misunderstood about this lure is that this really could be considered a drop bait, or in other words, the majority of the bites can come when that bait is fluttering down, sitting on the bottom, or just after you snap it off the bottom. I think the easiest way to think about fishing this lure is I fish it like I would a jig. Um, I fish a, a bladed jig, a chatterbait, the same type of way. I put it out there, let it flutter down, has a great fluttering action, hit the bottom, and then just a little pop. Just a little pop with the rod. Just fish it like I would fish a jig if I'm trying to hop it along the bottom. This lure obviously will work just on a steady retrieve. I've caught plenty of bass like that over the years. But when you leave it fall like this, it tends to kick in those natural feeding instincts. When bass see a bait fish that is, you know, fluttering down to the bottom, struggling along the bottom, it, it gets those instincts kicked in and gets them to come investigate where maybe they wouldn't if it was just a straight type of a retrieve. And a lipless crankbait, I'm fishing a uh, quarter ounce version here, but obviously they have half ounce, three quarter ounce. You can fish some deep water pretty quickly and efficiently with it, which is nice. Now, as far as the rod here, th this lake right now, the vegetation here in November is completely gone. I mean, it is wiped out, not even here. So I'm using a traditional crankbait rod, a composite rod, a uh, graphite and fiberglass mix, and it's got the very, very soft tip to it. Now, if you've got a place where you still have some vegetation, a lot of times anglers like to go with a medium heavy power rating on more of a traditional jig rod because when that, that lure grabs that grass, they got a little bit more backbone to rip it out of there, but really kind of play around with it and see what, see what you prefer. Now, what about the retrieve? I like to think about it this way. I like to think about, let's get as many drops as possible. So I'm gonna let it flutter out there and give it a small hop. I'd rather have 20 two-foot drops than five, six, or seven-foot drops, if that makes sense. I, I want the bait dropping as much as possible. And when you retrieve it, you should just feel a brr, just a brr, just a little bit. And that's about right. You don't wanna give it a huge pull off the bottom. You're gonna get fewer drops that way. Now the strikes on this, like I said earlier, a lot of them are gonna happen. You're not even gonna feel them. They're gonna, they're gonna grab it when it's dropping or if it's sitting still on the bottom, they're gonna come up and take a look at it. And if they are there looking at it, sometimes when you give it that initial twitch, that hop off the bottom, it'll make them react and they'll just grab it. So this is definitely a situation where it, your rod's just gonna load up. You're gonna feel weight. It's not gonna be a traditional arm ripping type of a strike as, as if you were just you know retrieving this on a steady retrieve, okay? Where it's just gonna boom hit it. It's just gonna kind of load up with weight, which is another reason why I like a crankbait rod. It'll help me not yank those treble hooks out of the mouth of that particular bass. Now, as far as color goes, 
for me personally, my, my experience has been that this is one of those presentations and lures where color can make a big, 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 big difference. If you're not getting bites or if the bites aren't quite committing, you know, if you're just nipping that, if the bass are just hitting the very end of that tail treble hook, if they aren't really getting it, that could be a good indicator. You got to go ahead and switch up colors. Um, a good starting point is always, you know, a bait fish type of a color, match the forage you've got, but don't be afraid to switch up. The, these lipless crankbaits just come in a huge range of colors. Um, so keep mixing it up, mixing it up until you get it dialed in. And like I said, if the bass has fully got it engulfed, okay, engulfed in their mouth, that's a good indicator you've got the right color on. If they're just nipping and they're just getting the back treble here, they're not fully committing to it. And I might go ahead and try to switch up in that particular situation. Fishing a lipless crankbait like this is also something that can be done in just a wide range of water clarities. Um, obviously with those rattles in there, it, it's got that drawing power, even in more stained and dirty water conditions. It's also important to keep in mind that this time of year, the fall, and like I said, this is getting into mid-November here in the northern part of the country, is when you catch one on this lipless crankbait, really, really work that area over thoroughly. The fish are starting to get in really big groups. And if you, if you find one, if you catch one, no matter the size of it, okay, work that area over. You may have found an absolute pile of bass down there. And this is a type of, of a lure that'll just get that school activated. And it could be catch, 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 catch for a few minutes and have a great day in the fall. Hey, if you would like to watch a video on fall fishing when the bite is tough, go ahead and check this one out right here. I think you'll find it interesting. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.